And now, the Mole News Network with Dylan and Greg. Hello and welcome to the Mole News Network, coming to you from the Nexus Hub Studios, where we will give you the highlights about what happened in the last month. Let's start with our first headline. The moon is shrinking. A study by NASA has found that the moon is getting smaller and decreased in size by about 45 meters in the last 100 million years. In their words, like a wrinkled grape drying out to a raisin, the moon is shrinking as its interior cools, causing wrinkles or faults to form on its brittle surface. When enough stress builds, it causes the quakes. NASA has been studying lunar seismic activity since the first seismometer was placed there by the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. They have detected moon quakes that have registered about five on the Richter scale. There is no word on what effect this is having on the werewolf community. A grape, you say? That sounds delicious. It does. Recently in Norway, a beluga whale wearing a harness was spotted by fishermen next to their fishing boat. This is, it is thought that the whale may have been trained by the Russian Navy. This is not a radical idea, as the Russian Navy has already acknowledged that they train sea mammals for special operations within the Arctic. The harness bore a logo reading, Equipment of St. Petersburg, and showed signs of use. The harness was removed by the Norwegian fishing board, and the whale was sent on its merry way. Well, hopefully none of Comrade Whale's friends will think he's running around naked. We now have a study that shows that Magic the Gathering is the most complex game in the world. The study has seen researchers using computational complexity to determine how resource intensive the relatively simple to grasp game is. For a game that most geeks use as a gateway to understanding game mechanics, we forget that there are tens of thousands of individual cards that can be arranged into a deck of only 60. Say the researchers, the number of variations in the game makes it impossible for us to calculate the winner of a Magic the Gathering match. They have said that, that this may mean that Magic the Gathering is as hard as it is possible to make a real world game. It would seem that not only is the game addictive, it is known as cardboard crack, it may also improve your computational powers. Unlike real crack. In recent news, Sony has announced that they are planning to use cloud-based servers to increase the speed of their new Sony consoles, but also to potentially promote cross-platform publications on the new generation Sony devices. Sony will continue to create games exclusively for their platforms, however will not limit third-party publishers. To accomplish this, Sony has partnered with Microsoft to reduce the costs involved with cloud gaming. However, Sony's Chief Executive Officer, Kinichiro Yoshida, has highlighted that there may still be a few issues with the concept as an end user may not receive the same benefits of the new services if the end user is a more casual gamer. Speaking of video games, let's head over to our gaming desk with Sean Rashma to see what's newsworthy in gaming this month. Thank you, Linda. Our first news comes from Sony as well. They are eyeing to turn their most popular games into movies. I'm not sure why they'd want to. To do this, they've established PlayStation Productions. They say they have been analyzing how Marvel has managed to turn their comic books into such a massive movie franchise. Sony has a different advantage here over the other game studios that have tried to do this before. They have a great catalog of games to look at, as well as the ability to use Sony Pictures department to help with distribution. The other good news is they haven't created a set schedule yet. So the studio will be allowed as much time as they want to create the kind of quality get content the games were created with. Patience is a good sign as all the other companies that have tried to emulate the success of Marvel have done it too fast and fallen flat on their, their faces. Looking at you, the DC Extended Universe. Do you like Game of Thrones? Do you like playing video games? George R. R. Martin hopes the answer to both these questions are yes. Never mind the fact that he's apparently developing five new shows at HBO, two at Hulu, and even one for the History Channel? He's also consulting on a video game out of Japan. Speculation has been that the person he consulted is none other than Dark Souls creator Miyazaki. They're said to be working on a new game from From Software, with the code name GR, with games like Dark Souls and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. It does seem they might mesh well with Martin's often brutal style. For those of you waiting for the next book, too bad. First announced in April 2018, Sega has decided to join in on the wave of 90s nostalgia mini consoles. 
by releasing the Sega Mega Drive Mini, their first piece of hardware since the Dreamcast back in 2001. They have now set a release date of the 19th of September 2019. The good news here is that the game lineup of about 40 games is looking really, really good. We've got titles such as Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, Echo the Dolphin, Earthworm Jim, Golden Axe, and Street Fighter 2. The console has managed to get a lot of retro games eager to drop their emulators. Just remember guys, not everything from back then holds up too well today. So for our gaming review, we're reviewing Vermintide 2. By Sigma, that's a lot of rack men. So what is it? Well, at its most basic level, it's a hack and slash Left 4 Dead meets Diablo Massacre Mayhem adventure. The game is set in the end times of the old world. For those who do not play Warhammer, medieval Germany with Rackmen, sorcerers, and 8-foot Vikings who want to pull your head off. The gameplay follows a pretty straightforward first-person hack and slash with a mix of shooting. If you have played Left 4 Dead, it'll all feel very familiar. Move around the map going from checkpoint to checkpoint while a seemingly endless horde of monsters tries to kill you. Even the special monsters have a familiar look to them, but the similarities end roughly at about the end of the mission. As you are whisked away to your home base, you suddenly find yourself playing the character leveling and item crafting that smells very strongly of Diablo 3. Was that just Nurgle? In fact, it was so similar, I didn't even bother looking up to play. I could just use it. Overall, the game was intensely easy to pick up and play. There are light attacks, big, heavy, slow attacks, and blocking pansies. But for such a simple concept, it packs a lot of fun. Knee deep in my 7th order clan rats, I realized I was enjoying myself. But what really boosted the atmosphere was the banter between characters. While chopping my way through several enemies, the Inquisitor took time off to lecture the party. The mercenary pointed out that rats should be worshipping cheese, not bells. It helped break the monotony by chopping up one million ratmen. Now, I've been playing this game online with a friend, and I must say it's better for it. As a single player, it just feels like you're grinding the whole time. Overall, I would recommend Vermintide 2. Not as a game to sit back and experience by yourself with an atmosphere, but rather as a game to grab a friend with a mic and hack your way through an endless horde of rats at the end of a long day. I do feel the character system could use some work. The crafting system is very, very bland. But then I'm not playing the game for those. So grab your sword, fight the horde. I give it four out of five squeaks. Now, back to the news desk. Thank you, Susan. McDonald's Sweden have decided to venture into a new untapped market. They had opened the world's smallest restaurant for bees. The handcrafted diner was commissioned by the uh, fast food giant to pay homage to McDonald's restaurants that have installed beehives on their rooftops in order to help save the dwindling bee population. The mini McDonald's features a drive through patio with seating and space for thousands of important guests. On-site witnesses say the event caused quite a buzz. Back in South African news, researchers from the Northwest University have decided to show their love for Xena Warrior Princess by naming a newly discovered species after her. The Elthusa Xena is a parasitic crustacean discovered at the mouth of the Orange River. One of only four discovered species of Elthusa, this little creature attaches itself to the gills of the superclip fish. As written in their paper, this species is named after Xena, the Warrior Princess, in reference to the strong nature of the female Cymethoid isopod. We have received no word on if they tried to establish its skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat or throwing a chakra. Let's hope they can learn to you, you late as well. We now pop over to the entertainment desk with Carrot to see how things are going down in the world of TV and movies. Thank you, Greg. Let's jump straight into the biggest news in movies right now, Avengers Endgame, a movie 11 years in the making the pinnacle of what has become the Marvel movie juggernaut. It has broken records all over the place, storming to $1.2 billion in just its first five days, hitting the $2 billion mark in just 11 days. Now, just 37 days after its release, it's the second highest grossing film of all time and tantalizingly close to Avatar's number one spot. And by the time you watch this, probably past it. The movie itself is a testament to the Russo brothers and how they have become the architects of the MCU. Ever since they took on Captain America, Winter Soldier, they have wonderfully weaved together all the films that came before. Rarely do you feel like any character is underrepresented, with the main ones getting beautiful attention to their development. 
and the climactic battle of the movie at the end had fans cheering in the theater. I was spellbound during the film, both times. It was a fitting showpiece to the incredibly ambitious vision that Marvel had when they released Iron Man all the way back in 2008. It felt to me like they could never make another film, and I would have been satisfied. I'm now even more excited about Anthony Mackie coming to Comic-Con Africa this year. Game of Thrones has finished. A series that gave us sex, violence, sexy violence, and violent sex, and dragons. After eight years of emotionally scarring television, the fans are not satisfied. An online petition has been started, accusing the writers of being incompetent when they have no source material to work from, the books being woefully behind on release. To date, they have already passed 1.5 million signatures on their way to 3 million. HBO has already stated that they will not be swayed by this petition, and that fans of the show should rather be excited about the various spin-off shows they will be doing about the world of Westeros. Side note, the men who helmed the show, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, will now be crafting future Star Wars projects. Good luck to them. We know that Star Wars has a very level-headed and understanding fan base. Right back at you. Uh, this month also saw the digital release of Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Foot, led by Shredder, have started stealing experimental technology in Gotham. Strange new metahumans have appeared. Batman, as well as Batgirl and Robin, must get to the bottom of it. I went into the film not expecting much more than some nostalgic fun but pleasantly surprised. The dynamic between the energy of the Turtles and Batman's brooding group was hilarious to watch. The team-up between iconic villains from both story arcs worked really well. And yes, Michelangelo was the highlight of the film. And lastly, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie has been delayed until Valentine's Day 2020. This is likely due to the massive backlash the trailer received after fans were quite creeped out by the lead character. Director Jeff Fowler has stated that the design will now be tweaked. And with that, Back to the news desk. Thank you, Carrot. I personally am quite excited about this concept. A laptop containing six of the world's most worst viruses and malware has recently sold on auction for $1.2 million. The laptop called The Persistence of Chaos was commissioned by the cybersecurity firm Deep Instinct by artist Guo Ordon. Among the viruses on the laptop, which were estimated to have created a total of $95 billion worth of damage, are the infamous Wanna Cry and My Doom. Luckily, measures have been put in place to prevent the laptop from spreading these viruses. Greg, that story was quite sick. In our feel-good news for the month, Japan has decided that sending Gundams into space can no longer wait, and plan on sending two specially made Gundam models into space. In commemoration of the Olympics as well as the Paralympic events held in Tokyo next year. The collaboration between Tokyo University and JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, will see Gundam and Zaku holding an electronic billboard which will be used to display messages during the Olympic period. The Japanese will be using one of their satellites to monitor these two in orbit so that they can be an active part of the games and showing the rest of the world that even a Gundam can appreciate the feats of athleticism displayed during the Olympics. Let's hope they continue their work long into the future, protecting Earth from any external threats. I'm always glad to hear of a new story where the increased chance of the Kessler effect f affecting our world for marketing purposes is a thing. In other news, the board game industry is seriously worried about Trump's trade war with China. The tariffs he has proposed on Chinese imports contain almost everything that is needed to produce board games as we know them today. The tariffs could increase board game costs by up to 25%. Various companies in the hobby games industry are quite concerned, seeing as they have no viable alternative to Chinese production when it comes to the quantities they work in. This would have a lethal effect on creativity in the sector, as it prohibits new creators from offering affordable rates for new limited-run games, such as Kickstarter projects. Let's hope that these tariffs do not get pushed through. Let's hope indeed. And now, for Sport with Kevin. Thank you, Greg. We start on the 4th of May, conveniently Star Wars Day, for the X-Wing Hyperspace Trials, 31 X-Wing players from across Gauteng convened for the very first Hyperspace Trials to be held at Geek Home. It was a great day of space combat, with several Molmen making the top 10. However, the long day of combat was won by Charlie Clutty and his Rebel Squadron. Congratulations, Charlie. Dylan managed to get an interview with owner of Geek Home, Casper. 
Comic book store, we do uh, comic books obviously, we do uh, board games, we do war games, we do card games, x wing brilliant so forth. Yeah. Thank you very much, Casper. So, if you ever find yourself in the Victoria area, come on down to either Geek Home or uh, Outer Limits Victoria and have a chat to Casper, and I'm sure you'll be able to sort you out with exactly what you need. A big thanks to Frank Milan for running an excellent tournament. A group of mole men took part in the SA Open for Blood Bowl on the 11th and 12th of May. This event was hosted by Warhammer Generals as well as War Zone at the Jeppe Quantum in Johannesburg. Blood Bowl culture, coaches from all over the country competed to take the title of 2019 SA Blood Bowl champion and they brought their A game both on and off the pitch. In the end, nobody could stop an undefeated Nicholas Nell with his ice-hot wild ones from taking the trophy. Fish sat down with, for a quick Q&A with Nicholas. The Blood Bowl SA Open Tournament is over and I'm sitting here with the undisputed winner who managed to win it in the final round, in the final game, took it from Gabriel who won day one. Nick, how did it go for you? Tell us about your game. Uh, unbelievable. Um, it, it was a typical game of Blood Bowl. It's just chaos and mayhem and the fans helped. I mean, Nuffle helped. Uh, I didn't deserve it. Uh, just blind luck got me the, the one of them. You deserved it more than my goblins did. Well done anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Mole man Ryan Penguin Young Hello! brought home fan favorite with his dastardly goblins, the Blackwater Buggers. Dylan also managed to get a few minutes with tourna tournament organizer Jonathan. Jonathan, do you have any feedback for day one for us? Uh, sure. Yeah, we had a good day. Um, some good numbers came through. Mm. Uh, quite happy. Uh, yeah, very tight, tight games. Uh, it's tight at the top. Uh, so I saw your last game against Elves. How was Elves vs Elves? That looked a little bit uh, intense. Oh, fun. No, it's great fun. <laughs> so ended 3-2 to my Elves, so it was always a good day, mm. as long as you win. Uh, so yeah, no, enjoyed that. Brilliant. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much and uh, we'll hope to see you very soon. Thanks Dylan. Great stuff. The mall men also found themselves at the Arnold Classic Africa of all places. The event happened on the weekend of the 16th to the 19th of May and we were genuinely surprised at the variety of sports on offer. Among the events that wowed us were blind chess and speed solving. For more on this, check out our video coverage of the event. The mole men primarily found themselves in the eSports wing, thanks to our hosts Nibble eSports. Some of us took part in a casual X-Wing tournament and that was won by none other than our very own Sean Booby Rushner. Hello! The true highlight came on Sunday when Arnold himself came to have a look at the gamers playing Counter-Strike. Flanked by a slew of guards thanks to some idiot trying to make a name for himself the day before, Arnold made time to come and see just what the what esports was about before being rushed to the next event. All in all it was a great experience and the mole men will definitely back, be back next year. In dairy-based sports, the annual cheese rolling event at Cooper's Hill happened this month. Many cheese-obsessed sportsmen and women tumbled down after Gloucester cheese. In amongst this celebration of fall-based injuries, Max McDougall managed to win the first men's race. He was glad to improve over last year's result where he knocked himself out. Veteran cheese hunter Chris Anderson, who has amassed an amazing record 22 wins over the past 15 years, was unable to compete this year due to being on holiday. Adding to the list of general bruises, sprained ankles, one man had to be taken away on a stretcher with a suspected fracture, fractured ankle. Back to you, Greg and Dylan. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> At least they weren't short of any crackers. And now we end off our broadcast with a segment we call, This is why we can't have nice things. Over to you, Fish. Well, this is it. It's finally happened. The world has provided us with the very first sex tape filmed in a self-driving car. What? Seriously? Come on, people. The young adult entertainment ent enthusiasts ignored all safety guidelines when they decided to film their video in the driver's seat of their Tesla while driving down an American highway. The film, lasting a paltry 10 minutes, was uploaded to Pornhub by the young couple. The company quickly responded to the video 
with a screen grab and caption reading that they are planning to report the couple to Elon for not having both hands on the wheel. Who knows if these are the first people to think of doing this or if this is what Elon Musk had planned for his cars all along. The tweet he sent out in response would suggest that he was just as surprised as we are. Sure, Elon Musk. Sure. Thank you, Fish. And now on to upcoming events. We have just enough time left to discuss the events that are upcoming in the next month. First up, we have the Next Generation X-Wing Tournament at the Nexus in Randburg, held on the 8th of June. This is a newbie-friendly event, so if you have anybody who's keen on learning how to play X-Wing, please bring them along as they will be very much welcome. Next up, we have GeekFest on the 28th through 30th of June, where at the Sun Arena in Times Square, Pretoria, where the Mulvane will be have a presence and we will ha be having a look at the Robo Wars event. Next up, we have Icon Durban on the 6th and 7th of July, at the Howard College Sports Centre in Durban. The Mole Men will be there and we hope to see you. And that's it from us. Thank you for joining us on the Mole News Network. Thank you very much for coming. Please share, like and subscribe.